Could your saddle height be secretly robbing you of power and wrecking your knees? The wrong setup could be costing you power and efficiency, and most riders have no idea. But here's the thing. Finding the perfect saddle height isn't just about formulas, it's about how your body adapts over time. And the best part, we've got some fresh research from 2024 backing this up. Scientists totally agree that getting your saddle height right is super important for riding better, feeling comfy, and staying injury-free. And there's one clear method backed by science that I'll show you. So stick around because it might just change your riding forever. Most riders set their saddle height once and never think about it again. But here's what the research says. Even a one to two centimetre difference can drop your power output. That's huge. Riding outside your optimal range for efficiency. That's huge. It also increases knee stress and joint loading. Again, that's huge. And here's where it gets interesting. And it's something you don't hear many people talking about. Your perfect saddle height today might not be the best one next year. And that's because your body changes, your flexibility changes, your strength changes, even the way you pedal changes. And that's why I don't believe in a set it and forget it approach. Instead, I'll show you how to find and refine your saddle height dynamically. Before we get into how to find the perfect saddle height, let's talk about the most common mistakes and why they're actually helpful if you know how to use them. The first one is setting your seat too high. You feel more powerful until you start rocking your hips and losing efficiency. And then there's going too low. At first it feels easy, but over time you'll feel strain on your knees and then you'll feel loss of power. There's also trusting old formulas. Your inseam hasn't changed, but your riding style, flexibility and strength have. And then there's copying the pros. They optimize for other things like aerodynamics and long races, not necessarily for comfort. And here's the key insight. These mistakes aren't failures, they're feedback. Your body is constantly adapting and discomfort is just a signal that something needs adjusting. So instead of fighting it, we'll use it to dial in your optimal saddle height over time. Cyclists have tons of ways to measure saddle height, but they don't always agree. For example, you may have heard of the Le Monde method, the 88.3% of your inseam measured to the bottom bracket. Then there's the 109% method, your inseam times 1.09 measuring from the pedal spindle to the saddle. This is way back from 1967. Then there's the heel to pedal test, the good old heel to pedal test. You put your heel on the pedal at its lowest position, and if your leg is straight, you're good. So if these methods aren't perfect, what's the best way to get it right? Well, the answer is coming, but first let's talk about the science behind why this matters. Here's what happens when your saddle height is just two centimeters too high or two centimeters too low. Efficiency drops. So raising the saddle 2% higher than a preferred saddle height significantly reduces the gross efficiency. And it also increases oxygen consumption. So what's the result of this? Well, I'll tell you in just a moment, but it matters here because lower efficiency means you use more energy for the same power output. Higher oxygen needs leads to faster fatigue during rides and effects show up even in a short six minute test. So, and the results here are significantly proven. They're not just observations. And then there's the higher knee stress, a poorly adjusted saddle. It alters your knee joint forces and it changes your muscle activation patterns when it's too high. So how do you actually measure this dynamically? Well, let's go step by step. And what is the most accurate way? Well, research shows that the optimal saddle height can be determined through knee angle measurements with ideal knee flexion between 25 and 40 degrees at full extension. And while some studies suggest that 25 degrees is ideal, others indicate a slightly higher range might benefit certain riders. And since foot orientation varies between individuals and affects knee angle throughout the pedaling cycle, the best way to determine your optimal saddle height is through a two-step process. Dynamic motion analysis followed by a feel-based fine-tuning process. The most effective method then is to measure knee angle correctly at home using a dynamic video analysis app. So using an analysis app like 
Bike Fast Fit, My Velo Fit, and even Appear, I-P-I-I-R. These apps track your joint angles in real time using AI-powered motion analysis. The app will mark your key points automatically and then also calculate your knee angle. But I do want you to note, most apps measure knee extension, meaning they display the angle of the thigh to lower leg relationship rather than direct flexion. So a knee flexion of 25 to 40 degrees corresponds to a knee extension of 140 to 155 degrees. So if you're using an app, look for the knee angle reading 150 to 155 for the lower flexion angle or 140 to 150 for a higher flexion angle. Then you just adjust in small increments five millimeters at a time, and then test again. Then you wanna double check by feel. So you wanna fine tune your fit. So once your saddle height is set using motion analysis, fine tune it by feel. Why would you do this? Because even with the correct knee angle, individual differences in knee mobility and pedaling technique affect how your stroke feels. So ride at a solid tempo effort, either on a flat road or on a trainer, and then pay attention to your pedal stroke at the bottom dead center. If one leg starts to feel unstable or disconnected, or if your foot drops suddenly and loses tension, your saddle is likely too high. Lower the saddle two millimeters below the instability point, this compensates for fatigue-related heel drop and ensures long-term comfort and efficiency. Now, why does this work? Studies confirm that riders have different pedal stroke mechanics. Some use more dorsiflexion, others rely on plantar flexion, both of which affect knee angle during pedaling. By combining science-backed motion tracking with real-world field checks, you'll lock in your optimal saddle height for both performance and injury prevention, and you can do this whenever you want. You don't need to rely on anybody else to get this done. But there's one thing that makes most cyclists perform even better, and I'll teach you exactly what that is in this video right here.